premiums, the cost of the uninsured when they use the emergency room for care. That is how it works. It is part of what's driving up the cost of health care in the United States. The stories that we heard, I hear stories like this every day. My life is a walking town hall. <laughs> now, you guys get to do this. I get to enjoy this every single day, every hour of the day, when I, as soon as I walk out my door. I hear stories like this over and over and over again. I share the concerns about the deficit. I share the concerns about the debt. And many of us are working to reduce that. But I think it's, it's just a truth that our system is increasing in terms of costs to alienate more and more families, to alienate more and more small businesses. And we have to address it. We can disagree on how to get there. But I don't know many people that believe that a system that denies coverage to over 40 million Americans is a good thing. A system that denies people with pre-existing conditions is a good thing. We all agree there are challenges. So what we should do is work together on trying to find the solutions and tell them how to record.
pretty quickly, you don't find many businesses that aren't offering health insurance to their employees. It's that simple. Um, the question I have is drug companies are advertising heavily on TV, uh, advertising an expensive process. Where do they get the monies for this? <laughs> I see you in problems. Hey, you know, I, the reason I, I would like to address this because it's come to my attention that Pharma has sent, has not only put on ads, but also sent out like postcards for me. I think politics, just so you know, elected officials have no control whatsoever over third-party expenditures, either for them or against them. When folks are sending stuff out against me or for me, I usually find out that someone in my family calls me or somebody, you know, one of my friends calls me and says, hey, I got this about you, or I see it on TV, or my wife sees it on TV. Um, they have the ability under our campaign finance laws to do as they wish and use the profits, I assume, from their company to do so. Um, but it is a third-party expenditure, and actually it's illegal for them to communicate uh, with anyone that they are spending money for or against for them. Mine is more of a comment than a question. It says, it should not, health insurance should not be an unregulated for-profit business for the wealthy only. with that sentiment. Um, I, I think he would, he would argue that for-profit health, insur health insurance companies should exist and people should have those options if they choose to, but that there should be an alternative option for individuals to choose if they would like as well. already answered them, but I'm not making a choice. Um, why, but we haven't had this one. Why would my employer want to keep my present plan when he could go with a cheaper government plan and save money? My doctors would change, maybe. Well, first of all, your doctors often change if you change employers and the plans change, unless you can find a plan that retains the current panel of doctors that you have, and then you're lucky. Um, the employer, and, and this is what I've been talking to employers about, they will do some simple math and, and they will make a determination whether or not the fee that goes up to 8% that I described, as well as the income tax if they are structured as an S corporation, if that cost would be greater than what they're currently paying in health care. Um, if they then choose to drop it, their employees would go on to the exchange and be able to choose on the exchange what type of coverage they would like to have. Um, I think as a benefit, if you have to understand too, the way the evolution of the healthcare system in the United States, it evolved as a benefit to employees. It, it didn't evolve as a constitutional right uh, guaranteed to Americans. It, it evolved as an, as an employee benefit really through World War II and, and through the 40s. Um, I believe employers will continue to seek to incentivize employees. And I think they will make an economic decision, but they, were all, they will also make a decision around employee satisfaction, which is exactly what they do today. You know, there are a lot of employers out there right now that can drop their health care benefits, but they choose not to do so because they want to offer that benefit for their employees. So I'm very concerned, as I mentioned at the outset, about incentivizing employers to drop their plans and go on to the exchange. I think they should have that ability to do so if they want to, but uh, I'm concerned about incentivizing that through the act. And I really think the, the rationale behind the surcharge is to alleviate that. So that's how it's going. 